Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today, we're going to be working on this Shimano Bantam Mag 10X. And um, there's something besides 10X in there. What does that say? Looks like it says 10X SG. Okay. Anyway, we're going to service this reel. If you, as you can tell, if you look really deep into it, it has been a long time since it was serviced. It's uh, gotten very dirty and fuzzy inside, and we are going to clean it up, service it, and get it back out there operational for Ken. I'll tell you what, let's do a not quick operational check first. Um, it feels like it's sticking a little bit when it gets to the end of the throw over there, and that may just be the amount of dirt that's piled up on the end but it sticks when it gets right there each time. So we're gonna see if we can make that go away. Um, the anti-reverse is working. The drag, the drag is working. The spool release is working. Okay, and the magnetic system on it seems to be functional, although I have no way of knowing that for sure yet. All right, let's take this thing apart and see what we can find. Start off by taking the handle off. I believe this is a 10 millimeter, and it is. And we're not going to be able to take that off until we take that screw out right there. Okay, this is a bit dirty up in these, so we're gonna go ahead and spray some WD-40 in there. Give it a chance to soak. And let that soak in there and we'll clean that up in just a little bit. All right, we've got a drag knob tensioner here. This one's in pretty good shape, so we're not gonna do anything with that. And let's take off the drag knob. With that done, we should be able to remove these two screws. And they should be captive as they're held in place. And that we should, I hope, be able to pull this off. Okay, maybe that is a release for the other side. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so far neither side comes off with the screws. Although this side looks like it's trying to, but it's almost as though this the uh, rotor is holding it in place. There we go. Now, the rotor was holding it in, um, just bound up grease and stuff in there. Um, we're going to slip this back in. It's got a shouldered side. The, the larger shoulder side, I believe, goes up like so. All right. Slip that back in. Screw it down, but don't tighten it. Just screw it down. Go ahead and remove the rotor or the spool. Okay, that looks good inside. A little gritty, but aside from that, it looks good. Let's take a look at the other side. All right, now, if you're just doing a normal service on this reel, at this point, all you're going to need to do is look at this, make sure there's not a lot of dirt in there, and put a couple of drops of oil in there. We're going to go ahead and pull this side plate off just because of all this slime and grease and everything else. You know what? Let's do this first. Let's try to keep all of that from getting inside the reel by eliminating it to begin with before the reel gets open to that point. Okay. Take a brush. Brush that out good. Wipe it off. And now... That functions freely we're going to go ahead and remove these five screws just to see if there's any dirt and stuff in here i don't believe there's going to be i think we're going to be able to just pop it off and pop it right back on again i'm going to break these free with this common first i'm 
when you put these screws in, they're just going into the plastic. They don't need to be cranked down real hard. Okay, and now take a very close look at this nose screw because oftentimes that screw will be different from the other screws. Okay, this particular one, yeah. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, it is longer by a long shot. Okay, that's the one that goes in the nose. Let's take a quick look at the side plate here. All right, there's nothing in here that looks like we need to get to it, except maybe for this C-clip here on the uh, worm gear. And we're not going to take that apart if we can help it. We'll see how that turns out. So for now, let's go ahead and put this back in. We're going to put two of the screws in. We'll put this top one up back here. Put this nose screw, let's clean a little of that dirt out of the hole. Put this nose point screw back in. If you look, there's a guide post right here that that screw is holding in. And we're going to take, slide that back in there and go ahead, screw it back down. All right, now the worm gear is pretty nasty dirty on this side, but what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this around to there and see if we can get the screwdriver on it so we can unscrew that worm gear. And again, let's do this. Let's try to get some of this dirt off of there before we take this apart to keep that dirt and dust from getting down inside the real. Okay, it's got the cap off. Make sure there's nothing going to fall out of there. Alright, and let's see if this is a stainless steel pawl or a steel pawl. Now, it appears that it has a stainless steel pawl in it, which means I can't get it out that way. So... So we're going to see if we can pull that pole out this way. Well, it's really in there. It doesn't want to come out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to clean it in place. We'll leave it open like it is right now, and we'll clean it right where it's at. Now, if you look, there's, somebody's applied quite a bit of grease to this. And uh, we'll see if we can clean that up. All right, we're going to spray this whole case and scrub it down real good and see if we can't get everything here to flow better than it is. Now, I tend to like these acid brushes for this kind of work because they will get into places and scrub places. They, you don't need a lot of force to be able to clean this stuff. You just need to get it stirred up with a little bit of cleaner. And uh, before you know it, all that dirt is just falling off. So the acid brush seems to work just fine for that. Okay, now we're going to rotate that. Well, first off, Let's spray some down into the worm rear. Right. And there lies the only problem with using your phone to video is uh, somebody inevitably wants to call and talk. Okay, so we got a phone call in. We're back to cleaning again. And we're just about cleaned out here. Now we're down to just wiping everything down. We've got the worm gear cleaned out. That worm gear does not want to come out, or the pawl. So we're going to leave it in. We've lubricated it well in place. And as long as it functions properly, just like that, that's how, exactly how we're going to leave it. All right, that cleaned up very nicely. We're going to go back now and reinstall the pawl cap. That pawl cap, that pawl really does seem to be stuck in there. It doesn't want to come out, so we're going to leave it in place. All right, with that on, we should be able to see how nice and clean that worm gear is now down inside it. 
Okay, we're gonna go in now and oil that worm gear. And we're gonna put a drop of oil in the end of the pole, spin it around a few times, and let's see if it any any more impacts and sticks. It used to be it would stick when it got to this end down here. Now it's still sticking when it gets down there. All right, that tells me there's still some dirt left in there over here. Okay, I'm gonna have to find a way to get that paw out of there, I think, but maybe soaking it with WD-40 for a bit is going to bring that to fruition. I'm afraid that there's some dirt left on there. It's gonna have to come off. And I believe the reason it's sticking when it gets to the end is because it has to reverse direction and it's having difficulty doing that in the hole. There, got it to come out. Things can look really clean from the outside, but inside can be a totally different story. All right. Yeah, see that dirt piled up right there? And I think that's causing the problem. Let's scrape that all out. Go. Let's scrub the pole good. Make sure that there's no contaminants left on there. And I'll tell you what I'm going to go ahead and do. Now that the pole is out, let's go ahead and see if the gear will come out. Well, to do that, we've got to pull the C-clip off of this end. But I think it's going to be worth it because of the fact that we're still sticking. I think we're going to go ahead and do that. That's a tight C-clip. Okay, with the C-clip off, it should pull out. And it does. All of this starts to come out at that point. Okay. Maybe the, the rod that holds the guide, the tube, the guide itself, the tube, and the worm gear. this point you can look at it and see that I did a pretty good job of getting it cleaned up so I'm hoping that all of the problem that it was having was all because of the uh, that little bit of dirt that was st stuck on that paw because this now looks very nice and we'll see if we can put it back together goes in this assembly then goes this assembly if I haven't got it backwards slip this around let's see there there this has a skinny side and a fat side if you're having difficulty getting it to slide in it's because you've got this fat side up against the tube okay so we've got the tube there now and we've got the guide assembly. Let's go ahead and wipe out the guide assembly. It should be reasonably clean at this point. Not much dirt in there, so that's in good shape. Okay, let's slide this back in. And we're going to put the guide back into it. All right, back into the guide. This is going to come over to this side and it's going to stop. And at that point, we've got to have this bushing over here. This bushing over here is 
It's going to slide in like so. And if you look, you'll see that there's nothing holding this guy, keeping it from rotating inside there. So what are we going to do to make that happen? There we go. That goes in. And that's locked, and it's locked in the wrong position. See how that is going up? Well, we've got to bring it back out and rotate it around to where it's facing downward, like so. Okay, once you get this slid through to this point, it's important that you go ahead and get this bar in. Now, this bar's got two ends. One end has a threaded hole, and the other end does not. Make sure that the end with the threaded hole goes towards the... Uh, magnet side. Okay, now rotate your guide around until that bar goes in. Then you can start putting the rest of this back in. In the event this bushing falls out of the side, don't split it. Go ahead and slide it back in. Okay, everything seems to be fine there. Take your C-clip or E-clip. Slip this back in. Keep your thumb on it so that it doesn't pop loose. There we go. Now, this will rotate or slide back and forth. The bar can't fall out. What we want to do now is we're going to put a drop of oil down inside the hole where the uh, ball rides. We're going to put a drop of oil on the pole itself and sit it down inside there. I'm going to use these hemostats to do that because my fingers are so big. So we're going to sit that down inside there. Get it to drop into the hole. Get it to drop down. At this point, you're going to want to start moving it around a little bit. Push it down a little bit. Still, And it's got to go all the way down into the hole in order to lock in. Once you've got it down there, you should be able to move pretty freely. Now, this is moving with the bar, and that's fine because when we put the screw back in, that should take care of it. Okay. Let's rotate this around over to here, and we're going to reinstall the pawl cap. this side over here set it back into place and ever so gently and make sure not to cross thread this there we go it should screw on easily if it's tight it's probably cross threaded okay that done now let's see how this turns now this bar still isn't held in place yet but so far, everything seems to be okay. So, we're going to come back. We're going to oil the worm gear, like so. And we're going to fit this side back on. Set it in place. Put that screw in. All right, so that side of it is done. Now let's rotate our worm gear and see if it's still binding. It is no longer binding at that end. Okay, so that dirt on the pole or some other dirt, something was causing that to bind right there. And I think we've taken care of that. So let's move on. Wipe off our spool. With the spool clean, we're going to go ahead and set it down inside here. We want to put oil on the shaft. We're going to put just a drop of oil down inside there. Oh, sorry, wrong shaft. Let's do the other side. Drop of oil here and set that back down inside like so. 
Okay. Now we're moving on to the business side of this. This is where all the fun happens. Okay, we're going to remove these two screws. These are bridge screws. Tell you what, again, let's see if we can get some of this dirt off of here prior to taking this apart. All right, now let's take the screws out. Okay, those two screws are out. We're gonna take the side cover off. There's nothing in there to service, except maybe put a drop of oil in the end of the, like so. Get these two screws over here. And let's take a look at what we have. We have a spacer. Appears to be a plastic spacer at that. Okay, we have our two tension washers. They're nested. Well, no, one ten tension washer and one regular washer. All right, the tension washer goes on the top. All right, then we have the gear assembly itself, which is going to come up. We'll pull that out in just a minute. All right. I see that when I lifted this up, the anti-reverse slid off of its post. This is the post over here for the anti-reverse to sit on. And this entire assembly comes up. That is really greasy, but aside from that, it looks like it's in good shape. This post appears to be very greasy as well. And all right, that's going to need to be cleaned up. Let's take our two yoke springs off and set them to the side. And then we'll take our yoke off with our pinion gear. And I'm not going to take the jack plate off because there's no reason to. But you can easily see how it all goes back together in the event that you did want to take it off. Pretty simplistic. I'm going to spray it and clean it just a little bit with some WD-40. We're going to put some grease on it and send it on its way. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take this main gear drag stack apart, which is nothing but a washer and a drag washer. That's all that's there. And uh, this one appears that it was lubricated originally, so we're going to lubricate it back, but we're going to scrub it up first. Okay, everything's back together. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead, or not back together, everything is clean now. And uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in and we're going to lubricate the jack plate. See these ramps on the jack plate right here? Okay, that's a ramp, and that coincides with the ramps on this um, yoke. And those two ramps fit together like that, so that ramp, when it pushes up under that ramp, lifts this. Okay, so we're going to put the little grease there. We're going to put it up underneath the jack so that when the jack moves, it's going to lubricate itself. Okay, notice this little copper washer right here. Okay, if it's stuck to the bottom of this assembly as you were taking it apart and cleaning it and you didn't notice it, it could easily get lost. Make sure that it's there and that it's in place on the bottom of this shaft right here because that spins and gives us our pivot point, our spinning point. All right, with that done, we should be able to slide this now. And while it's in the extended position like that, We'll go ahead and put a little bit more grease. So that when it slides back, it releases and slides easy. Let's see what it's going to take to trip this back. Uh, I'm thinking, let's see here. It should be this going one way or the other. Like so. There we go. So, there we go. That'll slide forward like that. I'll put a little grease right here where that's got to slide under. That way, when this slides forward, 
this will trip down like this and that will release next part to go on is going to be this shaft right here that shaft is going to slide down right up against and we've already greased that down there so that's going to be okay but we'll put a little bit of grease here on this shaft so that that'll rotate okay there we go and we're gonna loosen that up just a little bit by adding a drop of oil to that shaft slide that down there we go that way you're not having to fight that grease every time you cast next part that goes on is this assembly this is your cog for your anti-reverse and for your trip release okay and it's going to go down and it drop straight down like this now just before you get there you want to take this anti-reverse lever and see it's got that v twin right there you want to slide this gear right in between those so that it stays on there just like that and then bring it down to where the pin drops onto that post like that the next part that's going to go on it's going to be this piece and uh, it's kind of a heavy felt washer. It's firm. Uh, slide it down. And I'm going to oil that because it's felt. And if it's not fuzzy, it's fuzzy like felt anyway, so I'm still going to oil it. There we go. Next, I think it's time to go ahead and put our yoke assembly on. Now, just before we put that on, we want to take our pinion gear and inspect it real well. And this one is in really good shape. So we're going to take and grease it. And it's going to go onto our pinion, our yoke, like this. And then we're going to add some more grease right there just to kind of help glue it into position. Now set it down onto the two posts like this. Remember the uh, ramps have got to be at the bottom. With that installed. Now we can come back to our main gear. We're going to take and put some grease on our main gear. While I'm thinking about it, because I have a bad habit of forgetting to grease the main gear. I get so tied up on talking to you guys that I forget to do that. And we're going to set that down on there like that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of drag washer grease and put it down inside the gear. And then set drag washer back inside. Put a little more drag washer grease on the back side of the washer and then set it back down in its keyed position like so. Now we're going to set our two yoke springs back down. Make sure that they go down inside the yoke, not just sitting up on the top edge of it like that. With that done, we put this small washer right back down on the shaft. We're going to take our tension washer. I'm going to put it with the curved side up, facing up like this. And then we're going to take this last piece. And there is a, a shim washer on there. It's a flat one, or a loom, uh, brass. And slide that down over top, like so. And that gives this plastic gear something to turn on. So set it back down in there like that. All that in place and lubricated properly. We're going to set this case cover back down. And you feel a little tension, see it'll spring back up because of those two yoke springs. Now push it down until it lines up and line up your holes here. For your bridge screws.
All right, with that done, this all should function properly. Make sure it clicks. Okay. I think at that point, we're ready to slip this back on. Now, we've greased our main gear, and we've oiled our yoke, but we haven't greased the worm gear. So we're gonna put a little grease on that. And really there should be enough on the main gear to uh, provide it with enough lubrication. It should work fine. All right, we're gonna slide these two together now. Oh, hang on, these fell out. Okay, set them back in place because I flipped it over. Like so, and let's go ahead to prevent that from happening again. Let's go ahead and install the drag star nut. Okay. Now, slip this back in. Slide the gears back together. Let's realign these screws. Okay, there's no screw slots for that to tighten that down further. You just have to live with it. Okay, let's see how we do there. Okay, no binding there. All right, we sprayed this handle down, and we want to clean it out a little bit inside each one of these knobs. Get the dirt and grease out. I think I'm going to use a cotton swab on each end of it to make sure that I've got it clean. Like so... Let's try another one for the other end. Yeah. And it appears that somebody tried to pack grease down inside this. Instead of oiling it. We are going to oil it. Both sides. Okay, that seems to work much better than grease did. Slide this handle back on. Put our, oh, sorry. Okay, put our tensioner back on. Like so. Put our handle back on. Let's make sure that that Drag is down good before we try tightening that down so we don't mess it up. We have a screw now that has to go into the end here. That's not the right screw. This is the right screw. That locks that shaft to the other shaft. Holds everything down. Next comes the nut. Okay, I over tightened it just a little bit. Okay, first thing we're going to do, do a visual to make sure we don't have any parts left over. And we don't. Clear the board. And let's see what we have. Okay, we have a very nice free spinning spool. Okay, it does move back and forth, so we need to tighten this casting adjuster down just a little bit. Okay, that's good. All right, that's got that. Let's see about the drag. Let's tighten it down some more. Oh, nice tight drag. Okay, loosen that up so we don't squeeze all the grease out of the drag. Make sure that the magnet adjusts over here, and it does. Let's check this to see if it's binding anymore. It does not. We've got all the grease and dirt out of there, so there's no longer any binding. Let's wipe the excess oil off everywhere. And there, my friends, is the Shimano Bantam Mag 10X SG magnetic fishing reel. And um, it's clean, serviced. All it needs is some new line, and it's ready to go back together. I hope Ken likes his new reel. Um, it 
certainly is a nice one. Uh, there's no problems with the with anything on it. It's working beautifully now. So um, it's ready to go back to Ken. And I hope you guys like this video. If you did like it, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Hit the dislike button. And uh, I'd appreciate, though, if you told me what you didn't like so I can see about changing that or fixing it or whatever. And uh, if you'd like to see further videos like this, please, uh, I swore I tightened that down, but I guess I didn't. Always off check and check all your screws and everything once you get done. I mean, you don't need to crank them down really tight, but make sure that they all are snug. And apparently I didn't have these two all the way snug. Um, so... If you'd like to see further videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. For now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.